question here, Rina. Are the babies screened regardless of whether they pass or fail, followed up, and how does the NIH keep track of these children? Uh, what's the question again? Are the babies screened regardless of whether they pass or fail, oh, okay. followed so, up? So the are question they followed is, up? for if you are talking about universal newborn hearing screening, then all babies born should be tested or should be screened for hearing loss. So all babies, unless the parent signs uh, a waiver for this test. Okay, thank you, Rina. Are there other questions? There's another question. Where are the schools for the deaf in the Visayas and Northern Mindanao, and how are they funded? What is the status of specialized education for deaf kids? Okay, so the question is uh, not in my in my line, but I'm not really familiar of the schools in the Visayas and Mindanao region. Although we are connected with the College of Allied Medical Professions. And if we need contacts in those areas, we ask them for this information. Also, with regards to the deaf education, I think uh, I would I can ask them, the College of Allied Medical Professions. These are the speech pathologists, uh, speech and language paths, who are our colleagues and who we deal with almost every day. Okay, Rina. Great lecture, Rina. What percentage of newborn with hearing loss, newborns with hearing loss in the Philippines need a cochlear implant? We mentioned before that the prevalence of hearing loss is about, the profound hearing loss is 1.3 per 1,000. For those with profound hearing loss, hearing aids will not be much of a help. Although we always start with hearing aids, we just let them try hearing aids but for most children with profound hearing loss, they would need a cochlear implants. Okay, there's another question, Rina. How can we make the newborn hearing screening be more accessible to the general population? Um, that's a very good question. To make it accessible, then it, it would be good if it was free. If PhilHealth will cover all uh, babies regardless of their social status or ability to pay. If it is uh, free for all, then I'm sure coverage will be improved. Also, information or education of the community. Sometimes parents uh, do not believe that their children have hearing loss, which delays the diagnosis of these children. So it's good to have this uh, information dissemination or educational brochures to give away to inform the parents and educate them. Okay, another question, Rina. What is the current compliance rate of hospitals regarding universal screening? Compliance rate. Yes, yeah, so you're asking, would, your question would mean um, how many hospitals are complying with universal newborn hearing screening? This study is being done by Dr. Chip Recalde. We did the pilot study on nine hospitals. Uh, two hospitals there did not want to participate. You know? And another three did not complete the, the pilot study. And I think about six or, or six, five, four or five completed the study. So this tells us that there needs to be a political will or or it should be mandated from the hospital administrators themselves to, to push also for this universal newborn hearing screen in hospitals. And uh, another question, Rina, is what type of hearing test machine is usually used here in the Philippines? Uh, because it is quite cheap, the OAE or autoacoustic emission machine is the one more commonly used not the AABR, but as we know, AABR would give you a lower refer rate. So with that knowledge, I think more hospitals now are going to procure AABR machines. 
Thank you. And uh, how much do you need? There's another question for hearing aids. How much do you need for hearing aids? Um, there's a wide range of available hearing aids from about 30,000 to 100 plus thousand, depending on the need of the patient. Usually those with mild hearing loss would uh, the hearing aids for mild hearing loss would be cheaper than those for profound hearing losses. And uh, however, there are free hearing aids being given also uh, in the PGH, Philippine General Hospitals, and other other institutions as well. Okay, Ria, this is a very good question. Is there a penalty clause for non-compliance with RA 1979? Uh, we have. We have discussed that previously in the Philippine National Ear Institute, and there will not be any penalty. They're thinking of maybe one way of encouraging newborn hearing screening would be if you have it done really early and you follow, and you obey the law, then you would be uh, allowed for maybe in the future for he free hearing aids or free diagnostic tests which will not be given to those who did not have their universal newborn hearing screening as stated by the law. Okay, we have another question, Rina. <laughs> Good day, I just want to ask if how about those newborns in the hard to reach barrios, have we reached them? Um, that was one of the issues that I mentioned previously that we need to address those individuals, for example, those born at home, or those born in the far-flung areas. And we are devising in the PNAI a way of performing that, especially with internet connection and with cell phones very, being very common. Maybe through that uh, means, we can uh, reach all the babies who are born. Also, we have this bot test, you know, uh, wherein uh, calibrated sound is given to the baby's ear and then if the child startles then the baby would pass the test but this will not be covered by field health well this question i'm not quite sure about this question but is there a movement to create a law requiring newborn hearing screening just like in newborn screening i, I don't quite understand the question um, but I, I think um, there is a law already. Yes, there is a law. Yeah. 9709, which, which requires that all babies born be tested for hearing loss. Okay. And for those who can't afford, what happens to the people who can't afford? Um, that's why it's very important to be covered by PhilHealth. And also there are some institutions who help these uh, groups of people to have their hearing tested. They are the ones um, taking on the cost of the hearing screen test. So what can a, another question is this, you know, what can a patient do if there is no facility for a newborn hearing screening where the baby is born or the baby is born outside of a health facility? Okay, so if, if there's no access to any newborn hearing screening means, then we can fall back to the high-risk indicators. So for those uh, individuals there, those who with high-risk indi indicators would be the ones really needing newborn hearing screening. Okay, Rina, there's another question. Good day, our hospitals mandated to comply with a newborn hearing screening in the country, or is this simply an optional add-on service? Uh, no, this is really in the law. All babies really require newborn hearing screening, all babies born. Yes. And how much is a newborn hearing screening uh, test? How, how, yes, test. Um, the field health is 200 pesos, and the test is in uh, public hospitals. It is about 300 to 400 pesos. In government hospitals, uh, in 
in private hospitals, it might be uh, 700 or 800 residents. And how can we make the implementation of, of RA? I, I think she's referring to 9709 mandatory for birthing facilities and hospitals. Um, the question is how can, how can we, we make it the implementation? Okay, first is mandatory. we have to know that there is a law mandating universal newborn hearing screening. Um, number two, we have gone to the Son Desires in Mindanao, the PNEI team, to train those who are supposed to be screened. DOH has, uh, they, uh, DOH has disseminated the information. So I guess we just have to be in court and ready to be trained to do screening. Okay. Another question. Is there a catch-up hearing screen before a child enters school for those who were missed at birth? It's a good question. Okay. As of now, there is still no protocol for that. It's still in the works with the Philippine National Ear Institute. But in the United States, there is, I think it is required that all those starting school, preschool, and every year they're off until the grade three. I think it is required, hearing screening it is required. Also because at those ages, uh, acute otitis media and impacted ceremony is quite common. So it's to catch this uh, other disease entities also. Another question, Rina. Are there untoward effects from newborn screening? And the second is what is the false positive rate? Untoward effect, if it is done properly, there should be none. Babies are tested, especially those who are in the NICU. They are tested, um, they are tested when they are well, ready to be discharged. And I haven't heard of any untoward event occurring due to uh, universal newborn hearing screening regarding the false positive, false positive, positive rate, yeah. um, it's maybe quite low, maybe 0.01%, uh, quite low, um, yeah, so. Okay, another question, Rina, should the school require a hearing test before school entry? Yeah, I think that's very important. I think prior to school, my opinion is that a hearing screening should be done so that um, if there's any problem, there will be early intervention if there is a need. And if there's speech and language delay, then uh, we can know if it's because of hearing loss or because of other problems. Yeah, you answered the false positive rate. What about the false negative rates? That's another question. And what's the retesting protocol for that? I think you mentioned that in your lecture. Yeah, I did mention it in my lecture. So false positive would mean that there, uh, you would mean false positive would be, um, there's no problem, but the tests show that there is, right? So that would be about, about 4, 0.04%. Okay, are there more questions? Okay, if there are no more questions, then Rina, I'd like to thank you for this very comprehensive discussion. Thank you also to our, to our, to our sponsors for today, uh, uh, to today's webinar, MedL. And um, as a summary, we learned that um, newborn hearing screening is very important. And I'd also like to reiterate that early diagnosis at the age of three months and early intervention at the age of six months are extremely important ways to work. And with the passage of the Newborn Hearing Screening and Intervention Act, we're moving closer to having a comprehensive program here in the Philippines. So thank you very much again to all our participants.